You ever notice that when you go some places, people just suddenly stop talking? You know why? Because what they were talking about wasn't holy. And when you walked into that room, you shifted the atmosphere. People reject you. They say, I'm not comfortable around you, or let's not invite them. You know why? Because you change the atmosphere. You carry that authority. You have that dominion. Everywhere you step, God steps. Every place you go, Jesus goes. You don't have to look for an atmosphere. You are an atmosphere. When you walk in God's authority, you don't have to go seeking signs. You don't have to go following signs. Signs will follow you. Well, isn't that what the scripture says? These signs shall follow those who believe. You carry heaven's authority. You carry God's backing. I sense a strong anointing right now. We're called to establish the kingdom of God. Your purity matters. Your righteousness, holiness matters. When you keep your word, it matters. When you show kindness, it matters. When you demonstrate the love of God, it matters. When you face trials and still display the joy of the Spirit, it matters. You're not just some lone person off in the corner of nowhere fighting the enemy by yourself. When you walk in righteousness and God's authority, you're not just joined with God himself. You're joined with your brothers and sisters all around the region. There are righteous people in Atlanta, Georgia. There are righteous people in the United States. There are righteous people in this world. You are salt. You are light. You are image bearers of God. It's time to get rid of this victim mentality. I, I, was, I was listening to, uh, to Christian radio, which I do sometimes. Otherwise, it's that or I just turn everything off and there's no music at all. I told someone, some Christian radio stations are like vegetables. Taste terrible, but they're good for you. And you know, some, sometimes we can use a little help with our music. But I was listening to this station, and every day I listened, they were talking to their listeners like everyone was defeated. Well, if you made it to today, thank you for joining. <laughs> Tune in. Look, we know it's been a tough week, and we know it's hard, and it's difficult. Here's a song to help lift your spirit. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm not having a difficult time. Now I understand. And, I, and I, I, I understand when we face tragedy. I'm not trying to belittle those experiences because we all face tragedies where it's tough seasons. But my goodness, God did not call us to struggle. That is not the Christian life. Do you think in the New Testament church of ancient times that when they gathered for Bible studies, Paul got up and said, I know it's been a rough week, everyone, but you know you made it. You made it to Friday. And then go around the room. Let's tell everyone how miserable we are and call it prayer requests. Come on. Everyone take a turn. No. We walk in victory. Even in the midst of the trials. Now, in John 18, 36, the Bible says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Now, Jesus here is talking about the nature and the essence of his kingdom. Some have used this scripture to try to say that we mustn't establish the influence of God in the earth. But it's precisely because the kingdom is not yet of the world that we need to establish it. Because it hasn't come to fullness. Jesus did not mean that we mustn't establish dominion. The goal isn't to make God's kingdom of the world. The goal is to make the world of God's kingdom. 
So this verse is very specifically referring to Jesus not resisting the cross. Because he had to establish that authority in heavenly places before it could affect the earthly realm. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, the Bible says, So then, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I believe in the last days. I believe in the rapture of the church. But I don't believe that we need to go off in some corner and cower. Jesus did say that in this world we'd have tribulation. We can expect that. And the Bible does say that in the last days, perilous times will come. But the Bible never once says that in the last days that the gospel will lose its power. Kingdom is here and there, around and within. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So if you read Matthew 24, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, but if you read Matthew 24, you see that Jesus does indeed describe certain calamities that would precede the final days. And we know that as things tend toward the end, there will be more chaos around. But he continually says throughout that chapter, but the end is not yet. But the end is not yet. He says, first, the gospel will be preached and then the end will come. What does this tell us? It tells us that we don't go out defeated. The church goes out thriving. So how, how do we establish this kingdom? Well, in you, you establish it through righteousness. But we primarily establish the kingdom of God not through force, not through violence, not through mean-spirited communication. Not through pressure. The Holy Spirit guides the devil pressures. Rather, we establish the kingdom of God through soul winning. So we keep our dominion through righteous living. We establish dominion through soul winning. Win a soul... Change a heart. Change a heart, change a life. Change a life, change a family. Change a family, you change society. You change society, you establish kingdom culture. Now, some would say, Brother David, it sounds like you want a Christian nation. No, I want a Christian world. And so does every true believer. Is there, let me ask you this. Is there anybody on earth that you wish wasn't saved? For God is willing that none should perish. So what do we want? We want everyone to become a follower of Christ. And if everyone became a follower of Christ, that influence would permeate throughout the world, would it not? So every true believer wants a Christian world. But it begins with you. First, you must learn to rule yourself. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Dominion comes first. Personal dominion. That's number one. Second, relational dominion. This is where you lead and influence those around you. And in leading and influencing those around you, you establish regional dominion. And from regional dominion, we establish national dominion. From national, we go global. From global, we go generational. And from generational, we enjoy eternal. Dominion, people of God, is not a fight of force. It's a rescue mission to snatch hell-bound souls from darkness and bring them into the marvelous light of Christ. That's my heart. People might know Jesus. 
that souls might be saved. But it's going to take a church who taps into this power. You want to see power over sickness? Walk in God's dominion. You want to see power over the demonic? It's not going to take superstitious rituals, long three-hour sessions, drawn-out prayers, and special specific rites that you have to perform. Otherwise, that's in your strength. Well, I know how to perform the ritual. It's not your ritual performing. It's the authority of God in you. And when it comes to the authority of God in you, either you have it or you don't. And if you don't have it, you can talk to that demon for three hours. It's not coming out. When you walk in kingdom dominion, you're walking in heavenly places. You're walking and preaching and praying for the sick and casting out devils and ministering to believers and strengthening one another. This is what God wants for his church. It's victory. Yes, we look to his coming. Yes, we cry, come Lord Jesus. But while we're here, we have work to do. While we're here, we must establish dominion. How can you expect to establish dominion in your city if you can't establish dominion in your home? I want God to use me in the nations. Well, is he using you in your marriage? I want God to raise me to speak to people all over the world. Well, what about the people at your work? We want to overcome the kingdom of darkness on a global scale. And we can't even overcome our pride, our lusts, our fear, our doubt, our greed, our selfishness. It's not a message of condemnation. Because God can empower you to have that dominion in your mind in your heart, in your soul, in your home. It's time, people of God, to take back dominion. It's time, people of God, to take back what the enemy has stolen. You see, the thing about this is that once you begin to submit yourself to God, the enemy has to flee. That's authority. That's dominion. And tonight is the night to take it back. Maybe, maybe you once had that spiritual fight in you. Maybe there was a time when you would be on your face before God, seeking Him, praying. Perhaps your worship used to be more expressive, more heartfelt. Maybe there was a devotion to the Word that's possibly waned over the years. Take it back. Take dominion. You believe in God to set your children free. Take dominion. Enemies tormenting your mind. Take dominion. The enemies harassing you in your sleep. Just take dominion. We have been given the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The substance of Jesus, who he is, our master, our Lord. We follow him. And following him, that same power is ours. God, remind us of that. If you want that, then I'm going to invite you to join me in prayer by standing all over this room, you watching online, begin to write it in the comment section. Where can you regain dominion? Where can you take back what the enemy has taken from you? And I can see all of you online right now. God bless you. People of God, let the lion roar. Let that boldness come back. You know, people who are filled with the Holy Spirit are bold. Perhaps you've lost that boldness. The righteous are as bold 
as a lion may be, there's a loss of boldness because perhaps, perhaps, there is a loss of righteousness. Reclaim it today. Here's what I want you to do. First, you're going to take dominion over your mind. That's the first place we have to start. I want you symbolically and by faith to put your hands over your head. And right now, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to pray for you, through you. And the way that happens is through the gift of speaking in tongues. I want everyone right now to release that heavenly language. If you don't yet pray in tongues, just begin to say, Holy Spirit, I surrender. Holy Spirit, I surrender. Boldly now, church, boldly. Take back what the enemy has stolen. Father, I pray you give us dominion, kingdom power. Precious Jesus, we love you. Have us all reign in our hearts, reign in our minds. We submit to your lordship. That's what we need to do tonight, church. We need to submit again to the lordship of Jesus. Lord, we're not going to take the opinions of the world. We just care about your opinion. Lord, we're not going to back down. We're not going to be quiet. We're not going to give up. Lord, we follow you. Jesus, we follow you. Come on, church, pray in the Holy Ghost. Take back your prayer life. Take back your devotion to the Word. Take back your worship. Take back your righteousness. Claim your children in the name of Jesus. Claim your family in the name of Jesus. Claim your city in the name of Jesus. For those of you watching online, I want you to begin to write your nation in the comments right now. We're claiming nations. The nations of the world belong to the church. The nations of the world belong to the church. King Jesus has given us the nations of the world. Devil, we bind you and your deception. We take authority over the kingdom of darkness right now. Lord, we pray you expose and eliminate every lie of the enemy in the name of Jesus. With the authority of Christ, we now cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Freedom in the name of Jesus. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.